When you try this wrapper class once, you will never ever gonna start any project without it. I will explain all the benefits of this generic class, how it can make your code cleaner and show you the practical example. Watch this until the end and I will share some uh, useful tips and tricks. Before we start with an example, let me explain. This generic wrapper class has uh, four different states that we can use to represent our data. The first two do not hold any data and they are pure objects. The third one contains a generic data and the last one an error message. Below that we have three helper functions to return true or false based on the current state of our data. After that we have two functions that are used to extract the data from a success state as well as an error message from an error state. Keep in mind that uh, those functions can throw an exception if you first don't check the current request state. To avoid that, you could also create uh, two additional functions that return null if an exception occurs. And uh, finally, we have a composable function that uh, triggers an appropriate lambda based on the current request state. The first lambda is uh, optional, which means when the data is in idle state, you don't have to show anything. Now, let's see some uh, real examples. First, I'm gonna show how our code will look like without the wrapper class, and then I will compare that with a new approach that uh, uses a new wrapper class. So here we have a rather simple project, a composable screen that should display a dynamic content based on the current state of our data. Then we have a view model and a repository that we are using from that uh, same view model. In the repository, I have a dummy data, which consists of a three string values inside a list. Let's quickly create a new function that returns a flow and emits that same data. Then, in the view model, we're gonna call a view model scope to launch the coroutine and collect the data. But you see, we don't have any way to indicate whether the data is uh, being loaded or if we have received an error after all. Instead, we would create uh, two additional variables that would be updated accordingly. Now, finally, let's go back to the UI to observe those properties and display the appropriate value. If the data is uh, being loaded, we are displaying a circular indicator, otherwise a simple text. So, launch the application. And the first uh, thing you'll see is a loading indicator. After 2 seconds, the data is successfully shown to our users. Also, if something bad happens and we encounter an error, an error state will also be handled the same way. But uh, you can see where this is going. It increases the complexity and the maintenance of our code as soon as we introduce some more data sources in our application. Our project uh, would uh, turn into a boilerplate in no time. To avoid that, we're gonna use this uh, wrapper class to handle the state of our data elegantly. So let's add here a new function in the repository and uh, change the return type. When this function is uh, triggered, we are emitting a loading state. After we fetch the data, we are emitting a success state. As simple as that. Now, the good part comes into the view model. Instead of all this code, we are just gonna add a, a single line of code. And then, inside the UI, we are collecting that uh, flow as a state and uh, setting its initial value to be request state idle. Below that, we are dynamically displaying a content of our screen based on the current state of our data. We could also improve this uh, further more by calling display result composable function from our wrapper class. If you launch the application, then everything should work the same way as before. Only this time, our code looks a lot cleaner. The same goes if we receive some kind of an error along the way. So let's emit here an error state and launch the application once again. Great, it works like a charm. But wait, there is more. We could improve this uh, even more than that and add some uh, extra animation when transitioning between different states of our data. Let's go back to our wrapper class and wrap this uh, whole code inside the animated content composable. As a target state, pass the current state, 
And within the body of this function, inside the WAM block, we need to pass here the state which is provided by this uh, same animated content composable function. Perfect. Now, let's launch the application once again. So now, when transitioning between different states, we're gonna see this uh, beautiful fade in and out animation. Pretty handy trick to avoid the boilerplate and uh, reuse this uh, code in uh, multiple places in our application. What do you think about that? Do you use a custom wrapper class when fetching the data in your application? Comment down below and let me know. Other than that, don't forget to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching. Oh my God, if I die